Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to War on the Sea, a new World War II strategy and war game out by Killerfish Games, the developers behind Cold Waters and Atlantic Fleet. Uh, in today's episode, we are returning to our series where we're playing as the Americans during the Guadalcanal campaign, and we are launching what we're calling the America Express. Uh, that's because the Japanese have taken Guadalcanal and reinforced it, and they've put together a pretty strong airfield on the base. And so what we're doing is basically what the Americans historically did, or not the Americans, the Japanese historically did, and we're trying to run a bunch of cargo ships and troop transports and uh, warships up to Guadalcanal. What we're doing right now is we're trying to run an, a warship task force up carrying soldiers, hopefully uh, in the middle of the night, but... We are kind of coming up in daylight right now. The idea generally is to speed run up there, uh, avoid the air cover, then speed run back before the air cover can respond, bombard, and also bring in some reinforcements for the troops on the ground. So that's kind of what we're trying to do, uh, but we'll see how successful we are with that. With that being said, this was taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel. If you're interested in joining those, uh, the audience keeps getting bigger. Like, we were streaming again last night, and we had over 170 people watching a battle that I was fighting. We're way ahead in the in the streams because, I, you know, I stream two, three hours a day, and, um, you know, lately anyway, we've been streaming every day or every other day, uh, and I'm only posting like 30 to 40 minute videos on YouTube, so we're we're like a week ahead uh, in the in the live streams, but been a real good time. We've been having a, an awesome audience. We're we're almost um, we're almost a Twitch partner now as well, so that's pretty sweet. But hope you guys are enjoying the series. Leave your thoughts down below. Again, if you're interested, check out the link in the description. And I'm gonna step out and jump back in. There will be a little bit of editing in this particular episode because there's some weird things that happen. Uh, in this, I don't know if they're glitches or whatever, but we have like this surface engagement where, uh, or this, we had this battle where some Japanese aircraft attacked a task force, but then there was also some surface ships, but they were like ghosting on the map. And I think that might have been a bug that has since been resolved. But um, there's, a, I'll have to do a little bit of editing because of that. But that's enough of me rambling. Let's go ahead and jump right back in. You count like the kamikaze losses later in the war, but at least in terms to enemy action, that wasn't like flying missiles. Guadalcanal was like the one, the, the, the Solomon's campaign in general was like the one time the Japanese sort of were able in the war after Midway um, to stand up to the American fleet sort of an open battle on even terms. After Guadalcanal, it was sort of, that was no longer really possible for them. Leyte, I don't think the U.S. lost very many ships. I mean, they lost the, the couple of escort carriers and some destroyers, but like they didn't lose any heavy ships. Seriously, they're going to do another strafing run? Hey, boys. Don't mind us. Let's just pray there's no enemy subs around. So let's just leave right away. New content. By the way, I have no defense against subs with these ships. The only defense is to run. They have no sonar even. Look at that glassy calm sea. Yeah, she's probably down by the bow a little bit. If we take a look at the damage control, you can see the front. She's definitely down by the bow. She looks like she probably had her bow blown off. Why is the lead? Okay, they're both firing there. Two more minutes. Is that just a lone enemy aircraft? The enemy air activity around here has been very strange. Like a lone high-flying zero. There's more than that on the map. I know that. Two more coming in. These guys are coming in lower, so I'm guessing these one will, these guys will try and strafe. 
One of them's smoking. Yep, they're coming down to strafe. All right, so we got one of them. I don't know if, like, you get any credit for shooting down enemy aircraft. It tracks how many they've lost, but I don't know that it actually gives you any credit for anything. I don't think we took any damage there. Nothing new, at least. Both of these ships have... I guess they both took torpedoes to the bow, so it makes sense why that's where the damage is. They're still making 20 knots. They should be able to outrun any Japanese subs if they try and send any out after us. Although the Japanese could have an angle, depending on where they send them. I, I guess we'll see what one heavy cruiser bombardment does if it does reduce the airfield or not. No, you can't dewater the front sections. All right. We're sending this force in. Yeah, that's fine. Fuck, float planes detected us. You know what we should be doing? Let's ignore that. But what we should be doing is, do we have any float planes on the Astoria? Uh, let's go ahead and get our Kingfisher off. Just to see if we can spot what might be ahead of us. Subs or whatnot. They've got pretty damn good long range too. 300 nautical miles. Hey, Mass Wolf, thanks for the sub. Appreciate it, sir. Appreciate the support. All right. Another air attack here. I think these might be the returning enemy fighters. My Wildcats are on map. Mud70, thanks for the follow. So I guess first things first, let's turn our radar and sonar on on all these guys just in the event that there's an enemy sub around. Why is the Astoria... I should have checked my task force beforehand, but the heavy cruiser is on the outside of the formation. I honestly think what we should do here... Let's have everybody form... Alright, let's have everybody form up on the reed and try and form a straight line. Dangerous to torpedoes, but... If there is an enemy warship around, that will change their course and will kind of act like evasive maneuvers. That's my logic, anyway. All right. Go ahead and attack. I love when they bank and you see them crisscross in the sky in front of you. That's pretty sweet. So these guys are going to change formation pretty aggressively, again, which I'm hoping acts as kind of a evasive maneuver in the event that there's any enemy subs around. I'm not sure that there are, but in the event that there are, Please don't collide, though, guys. Please, you know, be smart, AI. Don't have ships cru cru crush into each other when you're following formation orders. Usually the formation orders are, are better like that. 
Look at all those five inch flak puffs. Gotta love it. Is this a Fletcher? Because she's definitely got dual mounts. Grensu, thank you very much for the follow. I'm assuming that if the enemy doesn't have fish in the water at the start, the fact that our ships are making 25 knots probably makes a an accurate torpedo attack difficult. Alright, so we shot her down. She's on fire. These fighters are coming in at high altitude, so I don't think they're strafing. These guys might be the guys who strafed last, last battle. Let's just start the retreat process to get us out of here in the event that the enemy does have torpedoes in the water. You hope the little cruisers of the small battle group survive? This is a big battle group, sir. This is a huge battle group. I mean, it's the biggest task force I've formed. Although not anymore, I guess. Now that we've pulled three ships out of it. If we can get those damaged ships back to port safely, though, that'll be pretty awesome. You know? Taking multiple torpedoes, enemy subs. You know, the mission might not be a stunning success because we're not going to have that strong bombardment, but just to get them away and get them back to port safely would be a huge win. So far, no, Super Cheese. I have not seen an aircraft carrier yet. Oh, this destroyer is going to get strafed. Not a very effective strafe job, though, there, guys. This is moderate damage, so I guess they did shoot the superstructure up a little bit. More enemy aircraft shot down by the uh, Atlantis back there. We did see the Yamato. Yep, we put four torpedoes into her. We saw the Yamato and the Musashi, I'm pretty sure. We saw two Yamato-class destroyers, or battleships. Oh, that was sweet. <laughs> Atlanta 5's in, in action. Boom! Give me that rapid-firing dual-purpose pur guns. I wonder why these side mounts aren't firing. One of them you'd think could bear. 60 seconds and we're out. Dual porpoise guns. When I'm playing this game, I think one of the things, there's nothing, I would say there's nothing sexier than watching shell bursts. When you're playing something like B-17 The Mighty Eighth, there's nothing more terrifying than shell bursts. It's interesting how your perspective changes things. Yeah, keep circling around us. I'm waiting to see if any of those guys crash. Doesn't look like it. Alright, so we'll exit. Okay, so no damage taken really. The, mo the reed might have taken a little bit of strafing damage. Five of the en enemy nine aircraft are shot down. I'm sick and tired of dealing with enemy fighter attacks. They're presumably coming up from Rabal or maybe Bougainville. Not Bougainville, maybe the Shortlands. Can any of the fighters over here get over there? 337? No. 
Yeah, this is definitely where you need an auto resolve. It just really makes the campaign drag to not have that auto resolve option. Even like war rule the waves, which desperately needs an auto resolve function, at least lets you get out of some of the small actions. I get why, right? Like in theory, this is an air attack on the formation. So you don't want to just like let people when they're about to take serious damage, potentially just like not play it, I guess. I don't know. Okay. Uh, J Street, we had our Tokyo Express with three heavy cruisers, three light cruisers, and four destroyers with about uh, 1,750 Marines on the way to Guadalcanal. They were intercepted by enemy dive bombers and, tor and submarines. The submarine put torpedoes into two heavy cruisers. Um, we also had a badly damaged destroyer. Those three ships are withdrawing. These two heavy cruisers are withdrawing back to New Hebrides, hopefully avoiding any further conflict with the enemy. Um, although we keep getting attacked by enemy fighters uh, on these task forces as we try and pull back. And um, the three light cruisers, one heavy, and three destroyers are still in the process of trying to run in to, um, to Guadalcanal. We've now decided to do it in daylight just to get them out of this submarine hellhole. And, um, you know, that's where we're at right now. So... That's what we're trying to do right now, is get these two heavy cruisers back to New Hebrides. They're currently obviously under air attack. And then um, get those other guys in to bring the, the resupply. What is this? What is it called? Rule the Waves? The game I mentioned? Yeah, it's called Rule the Waves. There's no 3D element. It's, it's a very much like a one-man show, uh, you know. I wouldn't say a spreadsheet game, but it's kind of like that. Um, you know, in some ways, it's like the out-of-the-park baseball of, like, worship games. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good comparison or not. But basically, it lets you build and manage your fleets um, in the sort of Age of Dreadnoughts. So from, like, 1900 to 1940 or so. does have carriers. Um, wars are kind of abstracted. You fight the tactical battles, but like the, the rest of the war, like the land side and everything's abstracted. It's basically like what Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought is trying to do without a 3D battle engine. Okay... Kingfisher's going to get attacked. More enemy fighters coming in. As our, our ships are not on this map, by the way. So our formation of four Kingfishers. Duel it up, boys. You got rear gunners. Can you shoot back? Do the rear gunners shoot at all? I have not seen any of the rear gunners shoot ever. Oh, apparently there's no enemy fighters around, so we just get to exit out of there right away. Okay. All right, I'm going to move at a slightly slower rate so I can kind of keep track of what's going on. There might be one more enemy submarine out here. Did I unload this guy's cargo yet? I did not. So let's do that. Oh, come on. Oh. Well, that's going to be interesting. So... This would have been fine before the two heavy cruisers of ours got whittled down. 
The B-17s are too far away, Neuhauser. I don't have any B-17s at Rinelli. They're all the way back at the New Hebrides. They don't have the range. They've got 580 nautical miles. They might be able to get into the fringe there. How far can they get? They can get up to here. They won't get into the combat zone. Uh, so... I could try and bring them down here, but the longer I do this, the more I'm going to expose them to air attack. We could do it like this, but then we'll be bringing them up in the middle of the night, and if we engage Japanese cruisers in the middle of the night, I don't like my odds either. Two Japanese heavies and two destroyers versus, what, three light cruisers, a heavy, and three destroyers? I don't know, Devonti. The thing you need to also keep in mind is we've got troops on board our ships, so if they take damage, those troops take casualties. I don't want to fight that. Hey, boys. Don't worry, we're in formation. Stick close and we'll be fine. Oh, there's an enemy dive bomber. That's not what I want to see. Can my kingfishers attack them? I'm guessing no. Attack, boys! Kingfishers on the way! <laughs> Let's see what happens here. Shoot these fuckers down. They even have front facing guns on the Kingfisher? Or just the rear facing defensive guns? Oh no. There goes one. Well, at least our rear gunner works. Oh no. <laughs> Quick boys, show him your ass so you can shoot a single manually held 30 cal against him. Good luck. Enemy dive bombers using their front facing guns versus our scout planes using our rear facing guns. Oh, that's awesome. I'm pretty sure they're too slow to keep up with the enemy aircraft, too. They could jump out and join the ground offensive. Yeah, I suppose. Two of our aircraft are smoking, by the way. We can't even catch up with them. Okay. <laughs> Loud noises! <laughs> Flee! Run for your lives! I mean, mainly I was just hoping to uh, break up an enemy dive bomber attack before it attacks my cruiser force. Alright. So these guys are going to head south.
dive bombers are all the way out here? Oh, no. Well, it was a good run, boys. Rightful rudder. Evasive maneuvers. God damn it, I should have sent back in Atlanta with these guys. Hey, they got a lucky hit on one of them. One of them's already smoking. Come on. Hit him. One of them is down without dropping a bomb. Another one's smoking. The bombs are out. Shit. One hit. Heavy damage. Heavy damage, heavy flooding. Maybe they'll be able to escape. I'm just praying for nightfall. Give me night or give me the Prussians? I've got to try and escape. Survive! Boys! Get the buckets ready. Great, a fire started. What are you guys? Is this like a Japanese damage control party? There was no fire, sir, but we started one by mistake. Try to put the fires out before you retreat. It won't change the damage level. If anything, the fires might increase the damage level, I think. But it looks like the fires, at least this fire, should be out in 70 seconds, which is before I'm allowed to retreat. You think it's dead, Pascobar? I sure hope not. Well, we could counter flood, but I don't know that that's what I want to do. She's already low enough in the water as it is. Her props look like they're borderline out of the water. Fire is spread, by the way. Fire is spread to this compartment. Although we put the fire out here. Does slowing down actually matter? Okay, good to know. It's an interesting combination. Sir, the compartment is flooding, but we also have a fire. Huh? So, are you saying we should wait to exit the battle until after the fire is put out? Will that lessen the likelihood that they scuttle her? More fires? 
Why does it keep spreading? Whatever, let's just exit out of here before more damage is done. Heavy damage, but not scuttled yet. They can get over here. Looks like they can get to these cruisers to provide cover. What do you guys think? Should we engage these heavies with our ships? Or should we try to escape? I mean, uh, trying to not escape, trying to avoid it. Fight, avoid. Avoid. Fight. Where are the B-17s? They're trying to get there. Well, I guess I'll try and chase, run south, and maybe we can draw the enemy cruisers into a fight where the B-17s can arrive in time. Although the enemy seems to be moving more quickly than we are. I'm not sure why they would be fat. No! Dive bombers! Too late. <laughs> May God... Why are you facing the water like that? Are you serious? Oh, yeah. This seems like a great heading, guys. Don't worry. It's not like we have to worry about an enemy bomber attack where moving slowly might be a bad thing. All right, begins a turn of the course. Enemy fighters spotted, dive bombers are up behind them. Not sure I have much to do in this fight other than just watch and pray. I think that's just an enemy fighter flying above us. Why there's one enemy fighter just cruising through the formation, I don't know. I don't think any of these fighters are going to strafe. They're all... They've got to be sort of top cover. These guys might strafe, I guess. They're definitely dropping their altitude like they want to. Dive bombers coming in. The Astoria would be the most likely target for them. Try and strafe one of my destroyers, and they get some good hits on it. Minor damage. There's a fire on the on the side of the ship. All right, dive bombers are coming in, guys. Switch your damn fire. Hopefully, they go after one of the destroyers. Why are you all shooting at the retreating fighters rather than the bombers that are about that are about to hit you? Dive bombers are focusing in on that destroyer. Hit by four direct bombs. She's gone. The other ones are going after the San Juan, it looks like. I 
think. I'm not sure. They just flew right by the formation. I didn't see any bombs. Oh, never mind. The reed. Heavy damage. We've got two destroyers that are crippled. Fucking A. The problem with this game is you never get any more points unless you sink enemy ships, and yet just the enemy spams you with air attack. And why do I have to wait five minutes after the air attack is clearly over? Alright everybody, I'm going to jump ahead to the end of this battle because we have a weird thing that happens in this battle where we start seeing shell splashes from what I think is a Japanese heavy cruiser task force, but we sail all around the map and can't find them, so I'm not sure if there was some sort of bug where like they were on the map but we couldn't see them, or if they were just way far away and we couldn't disengage, but we basically sail around for like 10-15 minutes doing basically nothing, uh, seeing an occasional shell splash, taking no damage, finding no enemy, and so I'm just going to jump ahead a bit because there's no reason to just watch me do that. We'll give it another few minutes as we try and close. I guess I can... Oh, it lets me retreat at zero. That must have bugged it. It does say there's two enemy heavy cruisers in this fight. It would have been nice to engage them without their destroyers, though. I wonder where they were. All right, well, we'll keep pulling back to the south. We've got fighter cover on the way. We've also got the B-17s trying to close the gap. Let's see if we can't uh, find these guys. Did look like they were chasing us south. Alright, so we got a visual on them here. What about these B-17s? How close are they? They've got 180 more nautical miles of endurance. They can get there. Alright guys, we also had a second really weird uh, engagement with these enemy cruisers where we had some aircraft that spotted the enemy cruisers, but they were kind of like pinned up against the island and they were literally like 30 or 40 real life minutes that I couldn't compress away from allowing me to engage. So there's going to be a bit of a jump here as well because sort of in the evening we spotted the enemy force but we didn't really want to engage them and they were in kind of a difficult spot to get to and so we sailed around on this map again for like 20 or 30 minutes and didn't really do anything. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward again uh, to the point later in the day when we had some B-17s coming up that I thought might be able to assist us in attacking these enemy cruisers that are kind of chasing us around this island that we're I'm not convinced I can beat them in a, in, in a surface engagement, so I'm kind of trying to avoid them, at least till I get my troops unloaded, but then I kind of have second thoughts and, and decide, well, maybe we'll engage them or, or wait for the B-17s to arrive. So we're going to jump ahead a little bit here so that the B-17s can come online, and then uh, we'll see how that, uh, how that plays out. If it's, you know, Flying Fortress-esque or not. The enemy fighters do appear to be going after us. Some of them may actually be going after our ships here. But some of them appear to be going after this fort this flying fortress formation. Enemy fighters are turning away? I don't know. He's, he's coming in anyway. Alright, let's see how this boy does. They're going to try and attack from the rear? 
Look at all that defensive fire coming in those 50s. Tail gunners, get them! Get them! Get them! Fortress taking some hits. She's going down, boys! That feels a little bit. She should be stronger than that. Come on. All right, we got one of the fighters. 50 caliber shells ripping through the air. No! Another 17 going down! They're banking away. Well, we've got two enemy... F well, just one enemy fighter, I guess, and we've lost two bombers for it. Straighten up and fly right. Okay. And down they go. Well, they're going to eliminate this whole formation. I can't really do anything with the formation, I don't think. That's a lot of lead, by the way, flying around here. Jesus Christ. Another enemy aircraft down. Another enemy aircraft down. Looks like they're just... Alright, enemy fighters incoming. Another fortress going down. Dear God. It's like you just touch them and they die. Ten B yeah, ten crew members per B-17. Rip. He's gone. All right, another another enemy fighter down. Another fortress down. All right, we're down to three enemy fighters, it looks like, and what can I tell, four, five fortresses? This one has two engines smoking. Nah, man, the fortresses might have not shot as many enemy fighters down, but they wouldn't they wouldn't be falling out of the sky like this. Two more enemy fighters. Yeah, you're right, Lake. Well, so much for using my fortresses to level bomb the enemy fleet. He's gonna bank back in. It seems like the tail gunners aren't super effective. But the but when the enemy banks in front of your formation, you rip their guts out. Meanwhile, we, we still haven't picked up the enemy fleet, so I don't know if they're not loaded on the map or, or where they are. Okay. Also, these, these 50 cals would be burning out if they were firing just holding the trigger like this. And there it goes. Well, they got a couple hits on this one. You could see it had some sparks on it, but it did did bank away. They're gonna come back on us again. 
Have we we still haven't spotted the enemy ships, huh? One hundred airmen down. <laughs> yeah, maybe they got in rafts. Devonia. Maybe maybe they got in rafts. They're gonna go join the Marines. <laughs> I mean, Guadalcanal was historically a very costly campaign. Come on. Come on. Get a hit. You could be more accurate than that. Come on. No! They're gonna get them all! No! Well, there go our forts. No, the Japanese did not have four engine bombers. <sighs> Flying boats, sure, but not bombers. The Zeros do have 20 millimeter cannons. I don't know if they do in game, but in real life they did. Alright. Well, guys, I think we're probably going to have to wrap this up after we conclude this uh, this air attack here. We'll, we'll have to see where we pick it up next time if we're able to engage these guys in a surface action or not. But we've been going for about three hours, so I do need to get some sleep. Um, got a long day tomorrow. So I hope you guys did enjoy. I think we're probably going to take tomorrow off on the, on the stream. So no stream tomorrow. But then uh, I expect to return around the same time on Thursday. So if you are interested in tuning in, that's generally around 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. Sometimes we start at 8.30 um, on, uh, on Thursday would be the next stream that we'll have going. But I've just got to wait for another minute and 20 seconds so we can get out of here. And uh, we'll have to see how this latest uh, sort of Tokyo Express run goes. Make sure no surprise enemy fleet shows up. America Express a suicide. You know, when we had the stream named Tom Brady is overrated, we did much better. I'm just gonna say we had a com we had a run in with some cruisers, dropped off some troops, no issues at all, clean run. As soon as we name it the America Express and drop the Tom Brady is overrated, that's when we run into trouble. Just saying. Chilcot in the Blaze, thank you very much for the sub earlier tonight. Mass Wolf, thank you for the Prime sub as well. Ejo Hyde, 1020 for the sub. Blood for the Blood God for the sub. Uh, definitely appreciate the continued support, folks. Uh, and uh, to all the new followers, we did like 20 new followers tonight, maybe more. I want to thank you all for that. Also, Castanar and Proxima Centurion, both of you, very generous. Thank you. Uh, that gets us up to 70 subs on the channel now. So uh, pretty pretty awesome to have so much support. Rough Bubbles 1 and Southern Southern Degent, thank you for the follows also. And we're going to go ahead and drop out of the battle here. You can see seven of the nine enemy aircraft shot down, 12 of the 12 allied aircraft shot down. And so we'll go in here and we will save the game. We'll go ahead and take a real quick look at the um, situation. Yeah, overwrite. Okay. And we'll take a real quick look at the ship losses situation. So our ship losses are ticking up. We're up to 18 ships, 119,000 tons. With that being said, one, two, three, four, five, six... Six, seven of those ships have been merchant ships. The enemy, on the other hand, has lost 23 ships for 148,000 tons. Every single one of those 
has been a warship. We only sank one ship tonight, though, and that was the Type 1B submarine that we depth charged after I put torpedoes in our cruisers. The good news is that Minneapolis and New Orleans have been able to pull out southwest of Rinelli Island in the night, uh, and it also looks like the Farragut may get out of there. So at least some of the heavy ships from Task Force 7 should be able to escape, uh, and we'll see if we can sprint into Guadalcanal at night with our light cruiser force and maybe drop off some reinforcements. Our Marines have lost 700 troops now. They're down from 1,700 to 1,059. They've got 1,000 supplies left. You can see it looks like their force strength is ticking to the left, so they're kind of being pushed back. We really need to get those reinforcements to them. So we still have 500 troops on these two destroyers, 750 on these three light cruisers. So that's another 1,200 troops. We'd more than double their strength at this point um, and help them hold on to a beachhead, but not a strong beachhead. Okay, so that's the situation, and as you can tell here, we're wrapping up this stream here, so I'm going to go ahead and end this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed yet another one, this one with some B-17s against some Zeros. Didn't work out too well for us, but we'll see how things play out next time in our next episode. Until then, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm out.